answer, or do you have any thoughts on why numbers are going down, why they weren't at 50? Um, well, nothing's at 50, so, <laughs> yeah, I, well, that's where I would like it to be, like, the fact that it was higher than 22% was exciting for me. Um, I feel what, we have two challenges. Um, right now, we're in a new wave of funding coming into cannabis, and I'm going to just, this is real talk with Wendy Borman. Um, so, old, yes. old white men give money to old white men. Yeah. 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 So, they, they may not have been the activists that got the movement to where it is now. They may not even know anything about cannabis except that it's probably going to make them a bunch of money if they do it right. And yet, because it's a boys club, they're trying to insert that model of doing business into cannabis. And I think that's a huge problem. Um, we are also increasing so rapidly, we're on, it, it's very easy to try to compare the cannabis industry to the tech industry, where that initially, in the tech industry, I mean, women started coding. They, they created the language that we're all doing, you know. Um, and yet, we decided to do a certain way of business, which is you take a guy in a hoodie sweatshirt and give him a garage and he can put an app together and, and make billions of dollars, right? That's become that model. Um, and it's usually a white guy in a hoodie, right? So if that's the closest new industry that's been created in our lifetime that funders are used to, that's what they're looking for. And that pushes out women, that pushes out people of color, that pushes out the LGBTQI community, that pushes out people with disabilities, that pushes out veterans. And we were the ones that brought it to this point. So I mean, my long-term goal is that we can have the film on the festival circuit for a couple months, but then we want to take this into communities to have the conversations on the community level. And I want to turn this into a series because we're not done telling this story about the women leading the Woo! Uh, well, just to agree with everything Wendy said, you know, movements traditionally embrace non-traditional leadership because movements are driven by the people that are most impacted by them. Usually marginal. Exactly. So when you look at, I mean, you know, a lot of you all probably know this because this is Marin and folks have a, a better sense of cannabis knowledge than in some other places, but, you know, medical cannabis modern day was, was, was HIV. It was uh, folks who had HIV who were seeking relief, who were getting together because they were marginalized from their communities because of beliefs of how HIV was spread. That opened up the movement to non-traditional leadership. Once something becomes an industry, you start to see traditional leadership come in, and that happens to be white men. I think it would be a huge problem for this industry to go that way because no offense, dudes, but you just don't understand the plant the way we do. And I can say that because you all say that about a lot of other industries. So I'm gonna say for this industry, women can say this is better suited for us. And we're not sad that we're not gonna let you in, but we are the ones that have the better understanding of this plant and how it can best help the world. So I think if we want this plant, we don't care about who gets there first, but we just want this plant to have the benefits we know it can have on a global scale, we need to let the women leave. And that's it. Woo! I definitely want to just piggyback off of what Wendy and, and Amanda said. Um, Lots of investment coming in, uh, good old boys club network uh, being set into place. With, the, with all this investment and money that's flowing in, they're putting in their own infrastructures into these little companies that the women have started. So they're basically buying up pieces of the company and creating these structures where they're putting white guys in charge. So, um, yeah, I'm here to stop <laughs> Well, let's talk about... Adrian, you want to jump in on this? <laughs> wow. I'm about to step on my grenade. <laughs> um, I, I, I actually have a, a point of view on this. First, I'll, I'll say, as a leader of a cannabis company, I, we have not had the opportunity to hire as many women as I would like. Uh, simply, we haven't had the applicants at the senior level. I, I'm literally talking my head of HR, saying, 
we have to hire a woman for this position because they're not even applying. So finding senior women who are entering the industry has been a challenge. Pause. Pause. Amber said something. <laughs> Careers at candescent.com, ladies. Yeah, you definitely got to get out and find people. People uh, say that a lot about diversity and, and, and the issues with diversity in Canvas. Oh, well, we didn't have the applicants. A lot of these people don't even know. So you got to work and go out there and find them. That's part of I agree. your diligence. I, I agree. We, we, and we certainly do. I was at the diversity panel uh, for the CCIA and the NCIA last week. So we, that's just a problem and an observation at the senior level. We see it at the more junior and entry level positions, sales reps, brand ambassadors. It seems fairly even men to women, but women entering the, trying to take like a top level marketer, leaving their career path behind and jumping into this industry, we haven't gotten, or a top level ge uh, general counsel, I haven't seen as much. One thing I will say is, and I don't think it's as much as a male, female, minority, or my not mo minority issue is, one of the things that we have seen time and time again in this industry is, I, I don't look at it as, <coughs> gender or minority, I look at it as old cannabis versus new cannabis. And, you know, I'll share, I had to let my brother-in-law brother go from my company who was my co-founder because he could not scale. Had nothing to do with him being a man, had nothing to do with him being a woman. He did not know how to function in a highly regimented process control environment and work as a manager, manage up, manage down. These are certain skill sets that are all required. And, I, and one of the questions I pose back to the panel is, the freedom fighter is certainly an important person. And they brought this industry to a point. But then there's a responsibility of the people in the industry to then cross over and develop new skill sets to work in a much more regimented, planned, and controlled environment, which is required to scale a core corporation because when you're building a plane while trying to fly the plane and expanding to nine cities simultaneously that requires inc incredible calibration and process which i'd say some of the freedom fighter element and some of the more activist oriented pieces of this industry has not galvanized around and i can tell you in our company a lot of the people who built the industry who we started with have not been able to adopt a different way of being to scale a corporation